Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the second problem of lead code weekly contest 356, uh, a medium level problem. Um, and yes, I would say it's on the easier side. So the problem name is count complete sub array in an array. So the problem statement says that you are given an array nums consisting of positive integers. Okay. We call a sub array of an array complete if the following condition is satisfied. What is that condition? The number of distinct elements in the sub array is equal to the number of distinct elements in the whole array. Okay. Return the number of complete sub arrays. What is a sub array? A sub array is a contiguous non empty part of the array. Okay. Problem statement is very simple. All you have to do is you have to find the total number of distinct elements in the whole array. Like for example, in this array, how many distinct elements I have? I have three elements, three distinct elements, right? One, two, and three. Great. Now for this sub array, find all the sub arrays, which have three distinct elements, right? So let's see, let's see what are those sub arrays. So right now my sub array is one, three, one, two, two. I mean, this is the original array. So let's start picking up elements. Okay. That's the brute force solution, right? It now how to keep a track of distinct elements. That is different thing. But this is what we need to do. Suppose I start, I check for all these sub arrays starting from this index. Okay. So the first element, no, there is only one distinct element. The first two elements, two distinct elements, the first three elements, again, only two distinct elements, the first four elements. Yes. Now we have three distinct elements, right? Which is equals to the number of distinct elements in the original array. So yeah, this is the first sub array. So one, three, one, two, this is the first sub array. If you stretch it and if you include this as well, then this is also a valid sub array. So one, three, one, two, two, this is also a valid sub array. So if I talk about the or complete sub array, if I talk about the number of sub arrays, which are complete starting from index zero, then there are two sub arrays. Now forget about this. Let's start from this location. So if I consider only three, is it a complete sub array? No. These two? No. These three? Yes. So 3, 1, 2 is also forming a valid sub array. Then what about 3, 1, 2, 2? Yes, it will also form. So 3, 1, 2, 2. Because the number of distinct elements here is 3, here is 3, right? We want 3 distinct elements, right? Because the total number of distinct elements in the original array is 3. Now the next starting index will be 1. So if you, if you try to generate all these sub arrays from here, you'll see that now none of the sub arrays will be complete, right? And that is very obvious because you want three as well. Three is on the left hand side from your starting index of all the sub arrays that you are considering, right? So overall there are four sub arrays and that is why four sub array, four is my answer, right? Let's see this. The total number of distinct element is one. So let's start generating the sub array. So it's five, 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 five. Take starting as this, ending as this. Yes, that is valid. Starting this, ending this, that is valid. Starting this, ending this, starting this, ending this, right? So total four sub arrays. From here, you'll get three sub arrays, one, two, three. From here, you'll get two sub arrays, one, two. From here, you'll get one sub array. So total 10, 10 is your answer, right? Because all the elements are same. So the number of distinct sub uh, elements in all the sub arrays are same. So hence you have 10 valid sub arrays. Now just see here, the number of elements that you can have is 1000. That means yes, I can start, I can, I have a possibility of generating all these sub arrays because 10 raised to power 3 into 10 raised to, 10 raised to power 3 that will not time out right and the number of the, the magnitude of an element can go up to 2000 right so we have seen the core logic that okay we can generate all the sub arrays uh, and check the distinct elements right now comes the question how to check the distinct elements right so just see here just see here in the in this array right there are a couple of data structures that you can use right to check the number of distinct sub arrays or uh, sorry, the number of distinct elements. One is a set and one is a map, right? One is a set, one is a map. Now, since I have to count the number of distinct elements, okay? So that means I also need their frequency. When I need a frequency for every element, I use a map, right? Set cannot be taken, right? Set cannot be taken. It will become complex, right? A, a little bit cumbersome to code, right? So let's see what we have done here. And it will become clear the number of elements I have. Answer is initialized by zero. This is the first map that I have taken. This is for whole array. Okay. So what do you do? I goes from zero to n whole array dot put nums of i whole array dot get or default nums of i 
comma zero plus one. In short, this means that if you already have nums or nums of i in this uh, map, then increment its frequency. And if you do not have it, put it with a frequency of one. So that is what it says. That put nums of i. If you have that element, return me the frequency or return me zero. And I'll add one and put put it back into the map. This is what this line means, right? It can vary from language to language, right? Now I have I have the uh, frequency of all the elements, right? So how many distinct elements will be there? It will be the size of the map, right? Because the uh, map will look something like this. Okay, that one one has a frequency of three, two has a frequency of one, and so on. So the num the size of the array is the number of keys that sorry the size of the map is the number of keys that you have, right? That's what we'll do. So now this is a map for current subarray. Now just see what we are doing here. We are i goes from zero i less than n. So this is the starting index that I'm considering. This is the ending index, right? I take a subarray. Now again exactly the same thing. Put the current element nums of j into your map. If it is already present, increment the frequency or put it with a frequency of one. Now, if the size of the current subarray is equals to the size of the whole subarray, that means the number of distinct elements is same, right? Then we just increment our answer, and finally we return our answer. It is something like this. Suppose you have three elements. So first, I consider subarray from zero to zero, then zero to one, then zero to two, then one to one, one to two, then two to two. Getting it? These are all the subarrays that we are considering. Starting index, right? And ending index starting is i, we go till j, so that is why j starts from i and it goes till n minus one. Getting it? And this is the trick, right? You populate your map and just check the size of your map, uh, the first map that you have created, uh, and the second map that you have created, right? And finally you return the answer. Now just give it a thought. Just try to uh, also write this code using set and see that whether you face any issues or not, right? Uh, that will also be a good learning, right? We have seen how to solve it using map. Just see, can you solve it using set? And if not, what's the reason, right? You can you can um, add your findings in the comment section, right? I'll, I'll go through each one of them, right? So yes, that's it for the solution. I hope you learned something new from this video. Uh, do support it by giving up a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel as well. And yes, uh, let me know in case you have any queries related to the solution. I'll revert on each one of them. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.